What's up guys, I wanted to show you seven uh, plugins directly used with Final Cut Pro. These are not free, well there's one free plugin, but the rest of them unfortunately cost money. But I think they are worth it and they are very handy. So let's go ahead. This is going to be super technical on how to use them exactly. I'm just going to show you what they can do, kind of how to do it, and uh, let you decide for yourself. It will be helpful to you in your editing flow. So let's jump right in. All right, guys. So the first plugin we're going to talk about is called Neat Video, and it reduces noise in your images. Have you ever shot in maybe low light and you notice there's a lot of grain or sand or noise? Well, what Neat Video does is it analyzes it and it gets rid of it. Let me show you what I mean here. So here we have the lizard. And if you look up in this area right here, you can see quite a bit of noise. I simply go to the Neat Video plugin, drag and drop it. From there, I'll go up here to select to open. And this will take a second. Now, one thing I will suggest is that you do this last because once you start reducing the noise throughout your project you'll notice that depending on i don't know how fast your computer is mine starts to run slow so it's always the last thing i do and if i'm making a super long video like 30 minutes or 20 minutes and there's a section of it that i need to use this on i'll export that first and then i'll drag it into my uh, final project but what i'm going to do here is i'll select a area where there's quite a bit of noise and I can drag this around to see there's 4.9 now one thing it won't let you do if I drag over here you'll see the area uh, is not uniform and they want it all to look the same so maybe over here on this black chair you see if it's too small it will say it's too small you can still use it if it's too small and I do all the time uh, but they just want you to have kind of a big area like this so uh, the noise level there is 4.8. I'll hit auto profile and keep an eye on this noise right here and watch it as I click over here and you'll see it disappear. Pretty sweet. The next plugin is by Cormel and it's called TrackX and DriveX and this is what it lets you do. so we have the footage down here I want to go ahead and track the layer this is nice because I can do it right within Final Cut Pro now I want to get the footage as well that I want to replace it with which I have right here so let me go ahead drag that down and I'll just make this the length Oh, I can't make it the length oh here we go okay well we'll make it as long as we possibly can so I'll go over here and I'll trim these two just so it's the same size. Go ahead and get rid of that. And with this, I want to make a new compound clip and I'll just delete it. Now I could put anything in that area that I want to replace uh, the layer with. I could put text or an arrow. In this case, I am masking out the, uh, the screen here. I want to track the screen here. So I'll go to an area and I'll hit this little drawing tool right there and I like to usually zoom in as much as I can and let's just draw the screen and screens easy because it's you know flat but you can also do this with you know other shaped objects so that is basically where I want it I'm gonna go to the front here and I'll have to redo it 
because when I track forward, if I were to do it here, I'd have to track back and then track all the way forward. So let's just go here to the beginning and I'll draw it. That way I can just track forward and I'll have to speed this up because it does take a little bit of time. So once I have that drawn like that, I just hit track forward. So once that's done, you just go back in here, click on the track layer. You want to click on the surface and this is right here is what's going to be the surface. And we're going to replace that now with the, uh, the GoPro footage and hit apply. And now you can see when we go through it, it will stay on the screen, which is pretty sweet. Here's a simple one that I use quite a bit whenever I'm using like a really wide lens that has that fisheye effect or a GoPro and it's called the fisheye removal plugin and it's simple you just drag and drop it and it removes the fisheye so there's with the fisheye or excuse me there's without there's with the fisheye there's without the fisheye here's another one and you can see how the walls kind of curve here if we go along and we just drag drop fisheye no fisheye now one thing you do have to be careful with when you're using this if you're panning like uh, up and down or tilting up and down you'll get kind of a uh, weird effect so I only kind of pan left and right with this one and as you can see we have the GoPro one here it works for this too you can see let's see uh, go here fish I remove there's the fish I removed so let's see there is without with without with and you can also go up here and make some fine adjustments. So the next plugin is super simple. I mean, you could probably make your own with black bars, but it's by my FCP effects. And it used to be stored over here in like the, uh, what you call the effects, but now it's actually stored underneath the, the text uh, under titles. So if I just scroll all the way down, look for the wide screens, and here they all are. And I can pick whatever ratio I want and then you just drag and drop it and it can go all over all your footage. I think that's maybe why they did that. So there I got the widescreen that I can go back into my clip and I can always adjust where exactly I want to put that. And there is one thing I'll mention too when you're doing transitions between them. Let me go here and just do a quick little cross uh, dissolve. And when I go through it, you'll see it kind of Oh, it didn't do it here. But if there's a blank layer underneath your warning color, it will show red. Let me uh, let me turn the opacity down on this. So you can kind of see you there. If it's transitioning, it'll go red like that. And you can always go up here and switch the color uh, basically to none. So that way you won't have that issue. So the next one is by my FCP effects as well. It is the white balance and they also have like a finishing effect. They have HDR. I use white balance. It gives you a lot of control, uh, especially on the simple, like if you need it to be more orange or more blue, but we can make this look more of a, like a sunny room. But even down here, it gives you a lot of controls like the saturation, I can kill the saturation or bump up the saturation to really bring out those lights that are really ugly. But uh, you have the gamma control which is nice, I can bring up the blacks and the, uh, where is it at here? The brightness too. This really helps to match basically whatever you're trying to match and it just, uh, you know, it's not too expensive of a plug, it works pretty good. So that is white balance. All right, this next one is by Cormel. It's called Lock and Load and it's a stabilizer and it's way faster than the built-in Wow, look at this crappy shot here real quick. And that's where I would use something like white balance. You see it's kind of way too blue. Drag it over here and kind of adjust the 
Uh, it looks kind of cool. Anyway, okay, let's watch the shot here real quick. Now, this lock and loaded doesn't work on anything. It works best on things that are like, oh man, that's almost perfect, but you can just tell there's something a little bit off. So if you see right when he kind of crosses under this <clears throat> thing right here, when I pan down, it kind of looks a little weird. This is where I would go in to the lock and loaded and they have two different options they they have the stabilize and shutter reduction and then they have the stabilize only the stabilize and shutter reduction you want to use uh well if your shutter just looks a little bit off that's when i would use the the shutter reduction if not i just use the stabilize only you just drag drop it and then hit track and it will track the motion and do its best uh to make it look more smooth and it doesn't work on everything like really close-up shots it's gonna maybe look more like watery uh, than stabilized so sometimes I try it and sometimes my original shot just looks better than with it trying to stabilize but as you can see here this is real time uh, tracking through and let's see what it looks like then you can see the scaling too and there are uh, adjustments that you can use uh, horizontal stabilize or vertical rotation overall strength but now you can see it's a much more smoother transition that to when I pan down than it was before so there it is with it stabilized and we'll take the stabilize off and then you can see when I pan down it's just kinda I don't know you can kinda see the difference here we have just a little handheld shot and again, just take the stabilization only, track the motion, and you'll see, you'll see here what it's doing. Real time, five seconds, it is much faster than uh, Final Cut's built-in stabilizer. So you can see this one took it into um, almost 120% scaled, and we'll just take a look at it here, and you can see it's much more stabilized than it actually was. So we'll move right in here to the next one, which is actually a free one. It is a LUT loader, uh, Pixel Film Studio, and you just drag it over there. And once it's there, you can go, I got my video scopes up here, and I like to pull up my color board once I find which uh, one I will use. So if we just click on the, the Kodak here, and I can adjust let's go back in here let me get my color board out real quick and it just allows you to load LUTs that's that's what it is and it ha lets you do it for free so pretty sweet go ahead turn this guy back on and you can get in here even if you're not going to use a LUT let's say here let me get rid of this even if you're not going to use a LUT it's still a really handy tool uh, to help you adjust like the color the gamma the contrast I can bring the gamma up here crunch the contrast uh, the pivot the highlight in the midtones if I wanted to get rid of that, some of that green or add some green have uh, access to the shadows so it's it's handy even if you aren't going to necessarily use uh, one of the LUTs and you can also mix the LUTs so if you don't want as much you can turn that off pretty handy <laughs> So there you have it, seven of my very useful Final Cut Pro uh, 10 plugins that I use kind of on a regular basis. And I know there's a lot of good plugins out there, so if you have one that's your favorite that I didn't mention, let me know what that is in the comments area. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching.